likewise. So are you, something tells me you might either be in Bali or maybe you're like on your way to Bali. Where are you at right now? Yeah, I'm in Brooklyn, so okay. not exactly Bali. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I'm heading to Bali in two weeks, and I'll be doing my next retreat out there and probably stay for about two months. That's what I saw. Oh, my gosh. Are you so excited? I'm pretty stoked. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the next retreat is women only, and so that'll be the first all-women's group that I lead, and oh, that will be a, a unique, fun uh, experience, and I'm excited to report on what I learned. Oh, that's so exciting. Well, I we work a lot with women. You're going to have a blast. Of course, you know women rock. <laughs> totally. I'm stoked. That's awesome. Oh, well, good. Safe travels on that. So what are you working on now um, between now and then? And I love that you're in Brooklyn. You know we're fellow New Yorkers. I didn't so know that you were from New York, really. Yeah, yeah. Upstate New York. So I never really even got into the city until I went to college at Binghamton. And so all of my housemates were, you know, from New York City. It was so fun, just a whole new world for me and love it down there. So what are you up to in Brooklyn? So in Brooklyn, we're lunch. I'm living here in Brooklyn. Uh -huh. um, but then in, in business, uh, I'm launching a podcast, which I'm really excited about. So kind of putting the final touches on getting that out to iTunes and doing these interviews, which I'm excited to be connecting with uh, people like yourself and mm -hmm. then gearing up for the next retreat. Oh, that's awesome. And I just want to thank you so much. I'm super excited as well to be connecting with you and... I just have been following your work for a while, and I just love what you do. I love the conversations you're having, and just the way you're putting your voice out there. It's just, it's been beautiful to watch, and um, so thank you for this. I'm feeling yeah, really Yeah, my pleasure. How can I best be of help to you in the time that we have together? Yeah, so what I would love to um, chat a little bit about today, so of course you know uh, our community, the Mindful Maven community, we're working so much on our personal development, we're reading lots of books, and um, of course I devoured your ebooks, which were awesome, love those, and so I guess our biggest question to you is uh, maybe the advice you might have to give to someone beginning a personal development journey. Where would you start, Jacob? What would you tell people who are kind of just getting in, like we just read, say we just read our first personal development book, and we've, we've got the fire and we're ready to kind of um, pursue our passions and everything. What would you say to us? I would say go exercise or dance or run or move, something to get into a flow where you're not so attached to trying to figure it out in your head. Is it the right answer? Is it the wrong answer? There's 30 other answers, etc. <laughs> and to drop into a state of flow, which can come from exercise, moving, dancing, being connected with your body and not so in your head. Yeah. And then when you're in that state, to reinvite that question back into your, your inquiry. So what is it that I'd love to learn more about? What is it that I feel would be most inspiring for me to deeply engage in? And to trust yourself. There's the famous mythologist, Joseph Campbell, and he was once interviewed by Bill Moyers. Bill Moyers said, you know, do you believe that everyone should learn about mythology? And he said, no, no. And this is a guy who spent all of his work, basically 50 years, becoming an amazing mythology expert. And he's like, no, he's like, if, if you're interested in it, then you should learn. If there is that inquiry within you as to, I'm really curious about that, like follow your curiosity, follow your intuition. And so my advice would be the same for everyone who is interested in getting more into personal development. Don't look for the right way to do it. Look for what is it that you're most curious about and trust that curiosity. Mm, that's really good. And of course, I love the dance uh, analogy because I'm a dancer and it's so true. I find uh, for myself when I'm out walking or I'm doing yoga or dancing, that's when so much clarity comes. And I think it's because you have that time to take things in and take information in and read and speak with people and 
then as you process, as you move, you really do process. So I couldn't agree more, and that's awesome advice. Thanks. And um, I recently saw a video of yours that um, you mentioned the process of kind of losing your mind. Right. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? I loved that concept. That was just such a great way to describe it. Mm, totally. Yeah. So one of the biggest suffering points in my life has been giving a lot of power to the thoughts that I think. Mm -hmm. In other words, if I had a thought, I felt like I was that thought. And if the thought was a crazy thought, I felt like I was a crazy person. I mean, we've all felt this way, I think, at one point or another. Right. But what happens is when there's years and years and years of these kind of crazy thoughts happening and believing that I am these thoughts, then we really start to internalize there's something wrong with me. And it's so much of our life becomes about protecting against people finding out of this thing that's wrong with me, that I'm not enough, that if you really knew this about me, that you'd outcast me, I wouldn't be worthy of love. Mm. And so what I realized, um, not just intellectually, but through travel, through bringing myself into new experiences, is that actually thoughts are just patterns. They're just patterns and habits of the mind. The same way that you have habits when you wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you drink mm -hmm. your coffee, you do what you do, and you don't really need to think about it. It just kind of happens. Mm -hmm. Our mind works the same way. We have these neural pathways that have been deeply grooven in over and over and over time, and it just kind of becomes our automatic way of thinking. And what happens is that when we identify what we think with who we are, we feel a lot of shame. And so what I was saying by losing your mind is to get into your body. You are not your mind. You are your whole. Mm -hmm. And your mind is an organ just like any other part of you, your heart, your lungs, your hand. And the purpose of these different parts of you is in service to the whole of you, mm -hmm. right? But what happens in our society and in ourselves is that we think we are our mind and then we discount our deeper wisdom of our heart, of our gut, of our intuition, of our senses. And so really giving people the opportunity to lose your mind is about dropping out of here and connecting to the whole of you and then using this in service to the whole of you. And one of the best ways to do that is through movement, through dance, through breathing. Basically, if you want to change your psychology, change your physiology. Mm -hmm. That's as simple as it gets. Yeah, oh, that is so true. I love that. You know, it's, um, I'm thinking about how we're coming up on the holidays. I think when, when this interview airs, it's going to be, we're like kicking right into 2016. So we're probably going to hear a lot of people saying, oh, I'm just losing my mind. Or, I'm, you know, so I think that would be such a great trigger for just that presence. And just when you feel you're losing your mind, Go ahead and lose it, like uh, according to you know your um, the way you laid it out. It's it's like that, that's great. Lose your mind and just kind of get back in touch with your body. Yeah, and if you are losing your mind, as society would say it, there's right. probably a reason for that because the thinking that's happening isn't really serving you, mm -hmm. and so it's a great opportunity to then say, oh. If I'm this stressed, if there's this kind of so much tension in my mind that's causing some disease, then maybe that's an indication that I'm attached to something in my mind and it's time to let that go and drop into the body. Mm, that's so good. Yeah, it would make a great kind of wake up call and just a way to check in. I love that. So thank you for that. And I'll put a link, I'm going to put a link to that particular video below because I got so much out of it. I know that the Lincolns will as well. And anybody listening. Awesome. Um.